Hi everyone. On September 1st, the Holy Orthodox Church commemorates the Holy New Martyr Angelis. Now Angelis was from the parish of St. Constantine of Caramania in Constantinople. He was a goldsmith by trade and was very well off because of this, and he needed to be. He had six children as well as his wife in his household. Now Angelis was going to learn a very difficult lesson about be careful who you party with. He went out of town into one of the suburbs of Constantinople uh, to celebrate a certain feast day. When he was there, there were also some Muslims that were partying as well with all of the Christians, and they were celebrating together and generally getting along very well. At one point, the Muslims took the scarves off of the Christians and put them on themselves and took their white hats and put them on to the Christians. Everyone was laughing it up and drinking and doing all the sorts of things that you would expect at a festal celebration. After it was over, everyone went back to their own homes and there didn't seem to be any problem. Well, Angelis went home as well, and the next morning he was very surprised when there was a knock on his door. And there was a Muslim policeman who was there. And he said to Angelis, why are you wearing the Christian covering that you were wearing part of the time yesterday? And Gallus said, well, because I'm a Christian, this is, this is what I normally wear. And the policeman said, well, however, we have been told that last evening you became a Muslim. And so you should be wearing the white cap that they gave you. And Gellis said, no, this is simply not true. I never became a Muslim. I never willingly put on any kind of cap. So the policeman took him off to the local judge. He told the story before the judge, and the judge was a little sympathetic. He said, well, why not just become a Muslim? What's, you know, why not just do it? And, and Gellis said, no, I'm, I'm not going to do this. So seeing that the man was very sincere, he sent him on to the vizier. Now the vizier was also very sympathetic at the beginning. He saw Angelis's uh, very, very devotional demeanor and the fact that he was very sincere in everything he said, and so he was flattering to him, gave him the usual line that happened so often during the time of the new martyrs of the Turkish yoke, and said, look, just, just become become a Muslim. You know, what, what is the problem here? You know, you're going to do this, we'll, we'll give you some wealth. Of course, Angelis was already wealthy, that didn't mean much to him, and honors and all this sorts of things. And Angelis said, look, I am not going to deny my Christ who died for me. If I can't be willing to die for him, then what good is my faith? The vizier became rather enraged at this after being so, what he considered, nice to Angelis. And he took him off and they had him severely beaten and thrown into the prison. Well, after this beating, they sent someone else who was perhaps a little bit more familiar to the new martyr, a friend of his actually in the neighborhood who also had a relatively high position in the Muslim authorities. Well, this particular man came in and said what he was thinking was perhaps a compromise that would be something easy for Angelis to deal with. He said, look, here's the thing. Here's the idea. I think it's a great idea. You become a Muslim. Save yourself in this way. Afterward, take your wife, your children, your trade, go into another area, another country where you can live in peace as a Christian and don't worry about it. Well, Angelus was not happy with this. He said, look, my Lord will still know that I have denied him in doing this. He said, well, we're all going to die. That's our destiny. Whether it's today, tomorrow, or many years from now, it's going to happen. And so if it does happen, I want it to be with Christ. Well, seeing that this has failed as well, 
he is sent back to the vizier, who then puts him through some more torments and finally says, you leave me no choice. You are to die. And Gellis, of course, realized this was going to happen all the time. So while he's sent back to jail and waiting there, they send his wife in to him. And his wife is very upset. She's wailing and screaming and making all sorts of lamentations. And then Gellis tells her, my dear beloved, don't worry about this. Get used to the idea that I'm not going to be there for a while. But if this happens, then you and I will be able to spend all eternity together in glory. And after speaking to her like this, she calmed down. She began to realize the wisdom of this situation. Her own very deep faith surfaced again and she understood that this was something that was going to have to happen. Well, it did happen. And the next day, only two weeks after the Holy New Martyr Stamatis had been executed in Constantinople, they took off the head of the Holy New Martyr Angelis, September 1st, 1680. For the next few hours after his demise, it was said that there was a heavenly light that came upon his remains so much so that the authorities decided to take his remains and hurl them into the sea. But by chance, there were a group of furriers who were well known to this Muslim authority and whom he respected, and they asked for the body of Angelis. He said, okay, but in the meanwhile, because of the previous order, the other boat went out with Angelis' body to cast it into the sea and because of a godly circumstance, when they threw the body overboard, the Christian boat was right beside them. And Angelis remains landed in the Christian boat. And they went and sailed on and took it away to a safe place in order for it to be buried. Not long after this, a local metropolitan was visiting. He heard the story about the light he heard the story about the three people who had condemned Angelis, who had actually gotten very sick and ill, and they were very much remorseful in what they had done to the new martyr, and they suffered until they admitted this, whereupon they then passed away. And after this, there was a law that was put into effect for the remainder of this short period of time that no one was to be forced to become a Christian, that they could voluntarily do so, but they were not forced to. After this, the martyrs' relics were buried where they remain as a testimony to faith in Jesus Christ and to the very, very difficult decision that sometimes all of us are faced with, even in the most minuscule of circumstances, where we must put forth our Orthodox Christianity first and foremost, no matter how much it may cost us, because great blessings will always follow hereafter, whether in this life or in the next. Bye-bye.